Hey everyone, so a while back we did a review of all legendaries in the game, basically where they're used, if they're good, if they're not, um, and today we're going to continue that but with the epics in the game. So let's uh, go over all of the epics in the game, where they're utilized, if they're even viable in any content. So the first one is Kelowna. Kelowna is a really, really good hero for arena. She's good in arena defense and offense. Uh, being able to remove negative effects from your team is pretty nice against, you know, pesky uh, RNG heroes like Corrupt Orac. Um, she's good against Aurea as well. This uh, control immunity and invincible is pretty nasty. There's a couple people that I've seen use her in arena defense, and it's gotten me once or twice. <laughs> so uh, kind of cool. Also removes some positive effects, which can be uh, also usable against some pesky heroes like Hyam or heroes that put up Invincible on themselves. So yeah, just a nice hero overall. Uh, a really nice addition to the game uh, in regards to countering you know, specific CC champions. Um, Tucker. Tucker is sadly not useful anywhere. I haven't seen him useful in any content. Um, I don't think anybody has you know, the cojones to book him to see if he's worth it, but he's kind of, he was supposed to be an upgraded version of Raj, which was a pretty viable Earth uh, elite hero. Um, he puts up this damage reflection, which is supposed to scale back, uh, reflect back damage based on his HP. The problem is, is you need to build him fast enough to get this off, which you don't want to do. And the fact that it is a buff means it can be removed. So there's a lot of people in the meta that can actually counter this. So he's actually useless. Celestial Kane has actually gotten a boost in, uh, in usefulness recently with Rift of Chaos coming out. Um, he puts up this Invincible on your team that uh, is the good Invincible. So it stays up the entire uh, in the entire duration of the buff, meaning that if somebody gets hit while they have Invincible up, it doesn't matter. It won't get removed. It just stays there until their turn is over. So um, he is pretty useful in some cheese comps in Rift of Chaos. Um, Zulus has come up with a couple uh, comps that involve him. He's also pretty uh, imperative uh, to the Vengeful Hassle comp as well, which, you know, uh, certain members of the community, like Elephant is his name. Um, he's usually like a PvE god. <laughs> um, he helped D-Hop and people like that come up with a comp uh, that uses Celestial Cane to cheese higher stages of Rift of Chaos. So uh, along with that Invincible um, and then Cleansing of Negative Effects, He's actually a really solid hero. Um, he was probably a bit underutilized until Rift of Chaos, but uh, viable in PvP. He's also really good in guild versus environment uh, versus specific uh, bosses. So a pretty good hero, but definitely got a boost recently with Rift of Chaos. So Alistair. Alistair does a bunch of attacks. You know, from his trait, he can cap on Rage and then... Uh, he can cast his ultimate ability uh, multiple times based on his trait, and it increases in damage. So Alistar is actually a pretty good damage-dealing unit. Uh, the issue is, is I think he's a little stat-hungry, so you're going to need uh, really good gear to you know, utilize him to his fullest potential because he is kind of slow. Um, and you want him going towards the back end of your team, but... Because he's a little frail, he can be one shot before he even gets to go. So um, he is a good hero. <laughs> he's just a little tricky to use. So Lightwing Zack has also uh, jumped back on the scene a little bit in the uh, PvP uh, space, mainly with RTA. Uh, he was a monster at the very beginning of the game whenever he was released. And then he was nerfed and then unnerfed. And then there was just too many heroes that kind of beat him up. <laughs> but he is a pretty nice counter pick in RTA because he's one of the heroes that does not uh, trigger critical hits on his ultimate ability. 
Um, so there's heroes like Afroween in the uh, in the meta that counterattack on uh, critical hits. So Lightwing Zack is a pretty nice counter to him. Uh, and then on top of that, his ultimate also ignores defense. So you can just stack a whole lot of attack on him, and you can ignore P like tank defenses like uh, Jonathan or Nero, Hakron. Uh, so he's kind of a niche pick in RTA. So uh, kind of has jumped back on the scene a little bit. He's still niche, but he is a decent PvP unit. So Lunar Melisa used to be, you know, top tier when it came to PvP, but uh, she's just too slow now. Uh, this taunt uh, was really awesome as it was an AoE taunt, and this is still a really nice character for someone who's beginning the game. Um, being able to AoE taunt entire teams in Arena can really help you uh, mitigate some of the speed differences. Um, so useful there. She is still viable in a uh, guild versus environment she's really helpful um on some of those tiles where you need to have a you know a common hero brought into your team and you need to protect them so she's pretty good for the aoe taunts there pretty nice uh sacred windstrex this is one of the newer light epics she has a unique trait that whenever you finish waves uh, she actually extends the duration <laughs> of all of your buffs on your team where usually whenever you were going through waves uh, it would reduce it by a turn so this is kind of neat um, she's really useful in void tower void tower hard um, for sure and i think she is one of the key pieces uh, to help progress in void tower mythic without you know cheese comps like a2 zoltan or vengeful hassle um, she also removes buffs and gives your team uh sorry debuffs and gives your team damage up so she is a viable option in arena as well also a decent unit in guild versus environment so she's uh, a universally used hero she's also useful in dungeon runs as well uh, ash magisteria things like that she's like a an epic light version of brand uh the fire brand uh so yeah kind of neat unit Royce, who is a unit that I desperately want, a really, really cool unit. He actually removes control effects from uh, your hero. So he's an excellent PvP character. He's somewhat of a counter to Vengeful Hassle, uh, who is widely run in stun set. He can be useful against Ashlyn in certain cases. Uh, you do have to be careful, though, because... Uh, he can trigger Ashlyn's bonus turns whenever he removes those effects. Uh, he's good against any kind of CC unit like Corrupt Orac, um, anything of that nature, but a really strong epic unit for PvP, for sure. <laughs> uh, Jabez. So Jabez is one of the heroes that I did uh, a spotlight on when I first started this channel. He's kind of a niche pick. Uh, there are a couple heroes within the meta that grant bonus turns. The thing that I'm noticing, though, <laughs> with Jabez is his stats uh, are starting to be outclassed. Um, even a fully booked Jabez at uh, an A5 Ascension to get that 15% bonus attack doesn't seem to be enough nowadays uh, to one-shot specific heroes that he used to be picked for. So uh, he's still very good. He counters with his ultimate ability whenever somebody gets a bonus turn. And he doesn't uh, he doesn't proc critical strikes, so he's kind of a nice pick against uh, Afroween and heroes like that as well. So he still has his uh, place in the meta. It's just it has to be a really well built Jabez, and he probably needs a little bit of help with some damage boosters, uh, whether it be Flarence, uh, Light Nick, Halia, things like that. But still a really strong uh, unit for PvP. So Punk is one of the epics that was just released not too long ago. I really don't think that he's a viable character. Um, I just don't think he fits into any real strong team comp. Um, he removes certain positive effects from people. He gives your team bonus damage. On paper, he seems like an okay hero. And I don't think he's bad. It's just I think that there's other heroes in in the game that just support your team better than what punk would um 
I could be wrong. Maybe, you know, he's a hidden gem and people just don't know it yet. Um, but I just don't see where he would be used. <laughs> the only place that I could see him being used right now as a subpar pick would be, you know, Guild versus Environment or Void Tower Hard. So Marion Shadowblood. Marion Shadowblood is a guild boss god. Um, she's in the, you know, meta team in guild boss. Uh, she does damage based on the boss's max health. She does true damage. She also gives herself some damage reduction and lifesteal. So she's a really great option for guild boss for sure. She's even seen uh, herself... Uh, make an appearance in some dungeon teams. I actually just showed a Queen of Tides team uh, yesterday. If you were watching yesterday's video on my dungeon series, uh, she's also used as a damage dealer there. She's been used in Witch of the Wind. She's even used in some Rift of Chaos comps in the lower stages. So Marion Shadowblood is just an absolutely great epic hero. Uh, she also does uh, bonus attacks from uh, her trait as well. She can come in launch... Uh, joint attacks uh, based on her speed. Uh, if you get her speed to 230, that's kind of the max uh, trigger chance that you can get from this. It's I think people have said it's around 70%. She's also viable in, in PvP. I've seen her be really good against opposing tank compositions because she does damage based on her true health. Um, sorry, their max health, true damage. Uh, and she can slowly whittle away at those teams. So uh, a niche kind of cool pick there as well. Uh, Aurea. Aurea is probably, I would say, in the conversation for best epic in PvP. Um, she has this amazing trait, especially if she's A5, where she inflicts a taunt on the person with the highest speed and then a taunt on the person with the highest attack at the start of the battle. This can just be really detrimental. Um, she's a great pick in RTA. She has uh, she's screwed me over once or twice. Uh, so her trait alone is really good. She then removes positive effects, uh, gives herself some sustain with this spiked restoration buff. Uh, and then she also has taunts. She also gives attack down and taunt for two turns on her S2. And then she has unhealable, which is not irrelevant in the PvP meta as well. So she's mainly a PvP hero. Um, I'm sure there are some instances where she's viable in uh, guild versus environment as well. But uh, her main uh, strength is PvP for sure. So Augustine. Augustine is a really cool character, kind of one of a kind. His specialty, he's a specialist when it comes to guild versus environment. He is the Lightwing Zack ancient tile killer. Um, he's similar to Jabez in the way that uh, he can counterattack with his ultimate ability. Uh, Jabez does it on extra turns when someone procs an extra turn. Uh, Augustine actually does that whenever somebody doesn't crit against him. If they do damage against him where it's not a crit, um, he will counterattack with his ultimate ability and do pretty big damage with defense pierce. And it ties into his passive where he does 100% damage to light targets and then 50% uh, splash damage uh, whenever he does that. So he's a niche unit when it comes to guild versus environment, but I think there are some applications in arena as well in PvP against those uh, really overpowered light legendaries. He's actually a nice counter pick against Zoltan, which has been a, a light legendary that has climbed up the ranks as one of the more annoying uh, legendaries to deal with. So kind of cool. All right, moving on to the red, green, and blue. So Akubi, um, this character has been seen as kind of uh, not very good. He probably needs a buff. Uh, there are some applications that I think are viable in Guild versus Environment. I've seen him used there. Um, there is some speculation that he could be used in Rift of Chaos Water Boss as well. Um, the Rift of Ka Chaos Water Boss uh, does less damage to your team the more unique debuffs that he has and akubi is all about debuffs uh, he also has this no positive effects buff uh, debuff on his special for three turns if he's booked which is pretty nasty um 
So he could end up being viable, but right now uh, he's not really used anywhere. Uh, Hitoshi. Hitoshi is a really uh, strong AoE nuking character. He's mainly used right now uh, to help clear with adventure for newer players. Uh, he's He can also be used in Queen of Tides as a, uh, as a wave clearer. He does pretty good damage on his ultimate ability. And from his trait, he actually gains uh, additional attack up stats if he's ascended, which is only ascend 2, which is pretty nice. Uh, he also has a leader ability, which was just added to give even more attack in dungeons. So uh, he's definitely built for adventure and then uh, dungeon clearing, uh, specifically uh, Queen of Tides. So uh, a nice character, but I would say he falls off towards the uh, end game for sure, but still a nice viable option in Queen of Tides. Uh, Karina, this hero was just introduced. I am planning on doing a spotlight on her. Uh, I've been kind of pushing that off just because I don't think she's that special. Um, she's okay. She's not a bad unit. Um, she ends up, you know, doing bonus attacks with her uh, with her basic ability to remove positive effects and then give random stats down. She also puts up unhealable and increased damage taken. So uh, <laughs> I do see this hero. Uh, being kind of a Queen of Tide specific unit, I think maybe she was built for that. So uh, I do think there's other heroes that are way better at what she does. But, you know, if you just pulled her, if you're new to the game, she could be a viable Queen option. Edicris used to be, you know, top tier um, epic, but uh, he has since fallen off. Uh, he used to be running stun set because he can proc additional attacks off of his uh, uh, trait. So what you would do is you would run him in stun set, hope to get some kind of stun and void tower hard against, you know, pesky uh, stages that you couldn't complete. Um, he was also pretty viable in uh, PvP as well. But again, there's just been so many heroes that have been introduced that are just bonkers, so he's fallen off. Um, Silen. Silen used to be a top tier arena defense unit. She can completely mitigate damage uh, 100%. So she was like an RNG factor. Uh, she actually has a pretty good kit. She has stun accuracy down on her ultimate and then she gives defense up uh, to your entire team and then she can counterattack uh, to put attack down on people. So she's actually a really great CC unit. Um, I think she's still an okay pick for arena defense, but other than that, she's not really used anywhere. Um, there is some speculation as well that she could be viable in Rift of Chaos Water Boss, uh, but I haven't seen that yet. So Orchi. Orchi is actually a pretty strong unit uh, in general. He's really great in PvP. He's also pretty viable in guild versus environment settings as well. So uh, a really great unit. I started booking mine and then stopped. Um, but if I ever get the chance to book him back up again, I do think he's pretty vi viable. I've shown some RTA videos um, as well where I just get soloed by this guy. So he's he's definitely a dark horse character in that, uh, in that realm. But great PvP unit and definitely viable in Guild vs. Environment as well. Uh, Windstrex. Windstrex is a hero that gives you speed up and attack up, which is really, really nice. It's a it's a really nice buff. 50 speed is huge. Uh, the attack up, there are plenty of heroes that do better buffs than the 30% attack up. But along with the speed, <laughs> she actually is uh, pretty viable. And her leader ability is really useful. You know, crit damage increased by 15% in all areas of the game. Uh, this gives her a nice little boost, to be honest. I think she's 100% viable in Void Tower Hard. Um, she's also viable in Arena Offense, for sure. Um, the nice thing about her over Halia is Halia can trigger, you know, specific uh, annoying heroes in PvP like Shark Soul Andre, where Winstrex will not. Um, she just boosts your team, and then you can nuke hard. Um, and with her uh, ability to increase the crit damage of your team, uh, your team will be hitting even harder. So uh, 
I think she has <laughs> gained a little bit of value because of her leader ability. She also has this reset cooldown. Um, she can reset the cooldown of anybody's ultimate ability. There used to be a cheese uh, comp with her in Vengeful Hassle, um, but they've since kind of nerfed that. But really solid unit in Void Tower Hard. Um, very solid unit in PvP still. Um, so really solid wood unit. Gajar is a specialist. He is here only for Gemini Dragon. Um, that's where he fits in, but... Uh, he allows you to farm Gemini Dragon 16 uh, within 20 seconds, so pretty cool. He explodes poisons. That's that's all he does, but he is a niche unit. He's a good unit, so do not you know uh, banish him or anything like that because you'll need him for Gemini 16. Uh, Baron, you know, I did a, here a showcase on Baron a while back. She is just top-tier nuker. She's the hardest-hitting wood character in the game. Um at least from an AOE perspective. You know, her her AOE ignores defense, and then she does a follow-up attack if four or more characters were alive whenever she first started her attack, <laughs> and this deals a crap ton of damage. And then she also gives herself crit damage up and damage up just at the start of the turn for free. So, a uh, fantastic hero. Great in Void Tower Hard. Great in Dungeons. Great in Guild versus Environment. Great in PvP. Just amazing character all over. Top-tier epic hero. Uh, Apina, this hero is kind of like a mini Abaddon. Um, there's no real use for her right now. I think she's probably okay in Gil versus Environment. She's probably okay against uh, Rift of Chaos Water Boss, but uh, she's more of a, a hero that probably needs a buff to be relevant. Uh, Zatlux. Zatlux used to be uh, you know, a premier hero for Queen of Tides, but he's been completely outclassed by Hitoshi. There's no use for him anymore other than maybe in uh, faction challenges. Uh, Crixus is one of the most uh, disappointing characters for sure. I have him fully booked, and he just stinks. Uh, he's supposed to do bonus attacks on his Shattering Blow, which is supposed to do pretty good damage. Uh, it ignores all damage reduction. I was hoping that he would be a nice counter to Afroween um, or Vengeful Hassle, but sadly, uh, you know, if he crits, he usually gets one shot by uh, Afroween or he ends up getting stunned by Vengeful Hassle. So uh, I don't see this guy being viable anywhere in the game. He's sadly uh, not good. <laughs> Uh, so Antinua. Antinua is a top-tier dungeon performer. She has really great multipliers on her uh, ultimate ability. Gives her a bonus turn. Um, she gets this unicorn blessing that uh, even though her multiplier seems low, uh, the unicorn blessing gives her 30% uh, additional damage and then grants her a bonus turn, and then she can go into her special ability. Uh, and if she has that Unicorn Blessing, her basic does uh, two bonus attacks. So, uh, pretty cool. Really, really great unit in, in Dungeons. She is a speed team uh, menace. She can actually do enough damage to Gemini Dragon uh, if you have specific units uh, to kind of get around the need for other specific units. <laughs> so, if you have like Shane and Flarence, uh, in Curse Snared Set, she can actually one-shot the Gemini Dragon, which is pretty cool. Uh, along with Zitlin, and, you know, it's it's a big thing. That's a video on itself. But uh, amazing hero for dungeons, for sure. Um, she's a niche pick on specific uh, Void Tower uh, stages. And I'm sure she's a viable sniper for, like, arena offense, uh, you know, take care of pesky water heroes like Nero or something like that. But her main role right now is definitely uh, definitely dungeons. So Vance used to be, like, top tier, but they nerfed him. Um, he, he could get bonus turns based on the amount of buffs that your, uh, that your enemy would put up on themselves. And then he would get bonus turns. Uh he used to be able to steal buffs uh, and then just do bonus attacks, bonus attacks, bonus attacks, but it's since been removed, so uh, I would say that he's not really viable anymore. Uh, 
he's he's okay in PvP, but there are better options for wood uh, damage dealers. Uh, Ricard's pretty cool. He does. Uh, he's one of the heroes in the game that does true damage based on his max health. So if you, I've seen some people get his health up to like forty thousand, um, and then he can just nuke entire teams. He's usually there uh, to deal with some pesky uh, arena units like Lydia or Levi or even Kasim. So he is a pretty viable option in PvP. He's more of a niche pick, though, uh, for sure. But uh, still a solid wood uh, kind of uh, tank damage dealer. So Hugh is like a speed specialist. Uh, he gives people speed down. He ignores defense on his ultimate ability. Sadly, uh, his attack is just a little too low. Um, he also does counterattacks on people if uh, if their speed is lower than his, which is going to be most of the time. Uh, so he has the potential to be really good. I think they just need to increase his stats a little bit, and then he could be a total menace. But right now, he doesn't fit in anywhere. Um, if he does fit in any place, it's PvP, but uh, I haven't been impressed with him. So regular Urzag... Uh, used to be the tank killer, but there has been you know plenty of heroes that have come out now uh, that deal with tank units over Urzag. So uh, he's kind of <laughs> fallen off a little bit. He's still viable. Um, he does get you know a leader ability, which might give him you know a little bit of a boost. But I still think that there's heroes that just do way better than him. Um, but yeah, he used to be like a guild boss god as well. But uh, things have just changed so much in this game where he's not really relevant anymore. Uh, same thing with Kane. Kane is one of the heroes that you start off with. He's an okay support hero, you know, doing stuns. Um, he puts defense down, and then he can absorb some of your uh, some of your hero's damage. But he's he's not really viable anywhere. Uh, Arundel. Arundel used to be a guild boss hero as well. Um, he does these joint attacks with your team whenever you deal a, a critical strike. Uh, and he can do decent damage on his ultimate, but he's just not really viable anywhere. He's outclassed by so many different heroes. Um, so I wouldn't say that he's he's a nice pick anywhere. Oh, uh, I guess I could say he's maybe viable on uh, Batwolf in faction challenges <laughs> if, if you're looking for a place to use him. Uh, so Viola. Viola is actually a pretty underrated hero. She has some unique uh, things in her kit, like she gives people focus down, resistance down. Uh, she does uh, damage based on people's max health. It doesn't work against bosses, which is a bummer. Um, but it is decent against some uh, tank compositions in Arena. She also heals your team. Uh, she can also duplicate uh, negative effects, and then she can apply stun to people uh, if they have three or more negative effects just from her trait. So pretty neat hero. Uh, I wouldn't say that she's really viable in a whole lot of areas other than maybe uh, faction challenges. I do use her in Batwolf um, as well as my team for soul plunders, but that is just lacking in general. So uh, interesting character. I think that she's going to have more viability as the game progresses, but right now she's somewhat limited to faction challenges uh, but could be a niche pick for certain pvp content so ramo which is the fire version of orchi has actually found a really nice niche in the game um with the rift of chaos fire boss uh not fire boss earth boss sorry uh the earth boss actually takes really high damage from heroes that can do counterattacks, and Aramo is one of those characters. So whenever he takes area damage, he counterattacks with this Burning Soul ability, which deals 200% damage. Um, so yeah, really viable in that content. I'm sure he can be viable in PvP as well, similar to Orchi, um, just kind of spiraling. His kit is very similar to Orchi's, so they kind of do the same thing. But his main niche right now is Rift of Chaos, uh, Earth Boss. It's the same thing with Thomas. Thomas does counterattacks as well. Uh, anytime one of your heroes is attacked, he has a 50% chance uh, of launching a counterattack. So pretty nice hero for Rift of Chaos, Earth Boss. That's really the only place that he's viable. 
Zachary. So Zachary used to be an elite hero, actually, and then they bumped him up to epic, um, which is a little annoying. Uh, he does have a leader skill, which increases your attack in dungeons. <laughs> I have seen some teams uh, that use Zachary to clear waves, uh, specifically in Ash Magisteria. So uh, I think he is viable there for some speedruns. It's just he's more of a niche character um, for sure. But he is like an epic version of Ciara where he does a big AoE if somebody dies. Uh, so, I mean, he is viable in dungeons. So Jacob, Jacob is a guild boss and guild versus environment god. He's amazing in those contents. Um, he builds up rage, and then he can give himself as much as eight turns uh, per round, which is a lot. So he pairs really nicely with, like, Marion Shadowblood um, for guild boss. He pairs extremely nicely with Opal um, as well, like in guild versus environment. So he is a top-tier hero for guild versus environment and guild boss. So Fire Melisa is actually pretty cool. I, I did a video on her um, on how to beat like tank compositions or speed compositions in Arena. She has this unique trait that only she has in the game where she gets plus 45% uh, attack, crit damage, and speed uh, at the beginning of the round uh, with this Vanguard 2, which is nuts she can get up to like 380 speed 400 speed easily um on top of that she actually has decent a decent kit where she applies no positive effects on both of her attacks and she can hit pretty hard because of her trait so she's a great hero in arena offense i've seen her used in rta from time to time as niche picks if she is booked i think she can be a real menace in rta um but sadly, you know, books are so limited that it's it's tough to, I guess, uh, justify booking her. So Felidia, uh, this is a newer fire epic that came out not too long ago, and she has made a real splash in guild boss and guild versus environment. She is top tier epic for specific teams that can do a lot of damage to those bosses. Um, I know another content creator, James, BXL, Bixel. I don't know if you sound that out or if it's just BXL. Um, he has some nice videos on uh, Guild Boss. He has some nice videos on Guild versus Environment Bosses that you should go check out. Um, Zulus also made a video on her as well. But she uh, extends Ignites, puts Ignites up, so she pairs really well with uh, Bachelard and then heroes that benefit off of doing damage from negative effects like Abaddon or... Uh, Raven, so really top tier uh, PVE hero when it comes to guild boss and guild versus environment. Scarlet is a bleed hero who pairs well with specific bleed comps. Uh, these work in dungeons. She's a great guild boss hero, and she's great in guild versus environment. So really nice hero. On top of that, she has a great leader ability that was just added that gives uh, your team fifteen percent attack in uh, guild battles. Uh, she summons this little wolf that does additional attacks as well. That's why she's good in guild boss is because she reduces the rage meter of uh, the guild boss. So a really nice support hero that can do, you know, nice little chip damage here and there. So a great epic for sure. Orak. So Orak used to be, uh, you know, the king of Tulpa. And I think he's still viable there. But uh, he does, he's one of those heroes that uh, does damage based on the enemy's max health this is not true damage or at least it doesn't come off as that in in the read i haven't played him enough to know if that triggers off of it uh but that will tell you that he's not super viable anymore but he's still an okay pick if that's all you got he is good in tulpa um so uh he's still viable there so trista i've been using trista a lot lately actually um she pairs extremely well with Ashlyn in faction challenges as well as guild versus environment. Great hero. Um, she has this ability that she inflicts stuns, uh, sorry, uh, ignites on people if they don't have ignite on them already. And then if they do have ignite and she's trying to inflict another ignite, what it'll do is it will uh, kind of detonate and it has a chance to inflict stun. 
Uh, the reason why she's good with Ashlyn is this counts as a negative effect removal, and Ashlyn has the chance of granting, granting herself extra turns if a negative effect is removed. So uh, Trista can give Ashlyn like three extra turns uh, around. She also does pretty good damage, you know, just with with her ultimate ability. So um, really great hero, like I said, in faction challenges in Guild vs. Environment. So Borden is a specialist of PvP. Um, he's there to take down heroes like uh, Light Nick. Um, so uh, that's really his niche. He's just there to deal additional damage to heroes that are kind of pesky with that death immunity and things like that. Uh, Mognar, completely useless. Don't even look at him. Uh, Azrina is okay. She does uh, damage based on the amount of ignites on the target. Um, so this is an okay hero to use. I would say that she's she's kind of outclassed by other other <laughs> heroes that benefit from ignite, but uh, she is still a viable option in some ignite teams uh, in like guild versus environment. So Hassel is a really great character for Arena. He gives your team member um, who has the highest attack speed up at the start of the turn. He can also put crit rate up and attack up on uh, one of your allies and grant them a bonus turn immediately. So if they're really slow, he can grant them that, that their, uh, a bonus turn, and then they jump to the front of the line and just do this huge nuke. So he's usually paired with people like Urian or Baron or something like that. Uh, on top of that, he also has an AoE defense down, and then he removes all positive effects on the main target as well. So just a great PvP hero. I'm sure he has some viability as well in uh, in some dungeons as well as Void Tower Hard, but he's specifically uh, used right now in PvP. Uh, Harbag, another one like Mognar, just completely useless. Uh, Bruzak. Bruzak is a niche hero used in Guild vs. Environment for Lightwing Zack tiles to kind of pair with Augustine. Uh, he has this really cool uh, trait that if one of your heroes is below 50%, uh, up to two times per round if he's ascended, he'll take the damage, um, which is really cool because he gives himself defense up along with the entire team and then a really big shield, and he can AoE taunt people. So he's a great support hero. Um, he's used in faction challenges as well, and I think he's still somewhat viable in PvP. Um, but he's mainly used in faction challenges in guild vs. environment uh, teams for Lightwing Zack. All right, moving on to water. Um, so Virgil, Virgil's just used in uh, guild vs. environment right now. Oh, not guild vs. environment, sorry, faction challenges. Um, he does AoE silence. He's pretty fast as well. Um, and then he can do, like, this additional damage based on this Arcane Sanction, but it's all, you know, uh, RNG because it's only a 20% chance. I'd say right now he's he's more of a uh, just niche pick when it comes to PvP. If if he's all you have, he's an okay uh, CC hero because he's quick. He can put up an AoE Silence, and then maybe the rest of your team cleans up. But um, he's definitely outclassed by a bunch of heroes. Uh, William. William's a great hero in dungeons. He's used for a bunch of speed runs if you don't have people like Florence or Shane. Uh, he's one of the heroes in the game that does a AoE defense down, and he's one of the only heroes in the game that gives a team-wide counterattack buff, um, which is really helpful in specific content. Um, I think he's even viable in uh, Rift of Chaos Earth Boss in the earlier stages. Because, uh, like I said, the counterattack is really strong against the Earth boss. So, um, pretty cool there. He also does uh, these joint attacks where, on his basic, he'll summon in someone to do a joint attack with him. It is random, so you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, but, <laughs> really cool unit. And then he also increases the damage of uh, the basic abilities of your heroes by 60% if he's ascended. So, he obviously pairs really well with people like uh, Jacob. He plays pairs really well with people like opal so yeah um santis santis is the premier poison uh damage dealer she used to be the queen of dungeons uh, along with gangello for speed runs until uh they kind of nerfed that for the later end hell stages 
but she's still really viable in Rift of Chaos, um, Water Boss. Stages 1 through 4 can be autoed with her and Gangello, uh, which is really nice if you don't have more of the meta units that they're pumping out for that content specifically. <laughs> um, she's really good in Batwolf as well and earlier stages of dungeons. So still a really viable epic character. Um, she's just used now endgame for Gemini uh, Dragon 16 dungeon, as well as Rift of Chaos Water Boss stages 1 through 4. Uh, and then she's viable in all dungeon stages uh, 1 up through Hell Stage 2. Hakran, man, this, this hero was amazing when he first came out in the game. He's one of the OG epics. And he is still viable to this day. He has one of the best traits in the game where based on his defense, um, he distributes what his defense stat is to the rest of your team equal to 20% of his defense. Absolutely amazing. And then on top of that, he puts up this max health up buff on your entire team, which can be removed, but it doesn't have a time limit on it. Um, there are a couple of heroes that also do this buff, but it only lasts for like two turns. This is a static max health up. So really fantastic character. He's so key to helping you beat like end game content to keep your team uh, like really buffed up and juicy. So top tier epic. Andre used to be an amazing water hero for PvP. He's still viable. Um, he removes buffs on people, but he has definitely lost some of his uh, usefulness because of the uh, reworking <laughs> to heroes like Dark Nick. Um, there's also heroes that uh, kind of made him irrelevant, like Alicia, the fire hero, Fox, legendary. Um, he's still a good hero, but definitely uh, more of a niche pick nowadays than anything. Uh, Kyle's pretty good. He's he's an interesting hero uh, that actually shapeshifts or morphs into somebody on the opposing team. So he has really, really fast speed. Um, he's kind of used to copy uh, like opposing Halia's or uh, Divine Yolanda's to give your team resistance up and invincible. Uh, so he's a pretty cool hero in PvP, but that is his only use. And I think he's more of a RTA unit. Uh, than anything else. So Hazel's pretty good uh, support unit. She is uh, similar to Viola that uh, if she attacks, if somebody gets attacked four times in a row, um, she has the chance to inflict stun on that target and then also inflict stun on the rest of uh, the enemy team. She also has a revive, which was recently put in, and then she has that max health up similar to Hakrin, but like I said, hers is only for two turns. It's not static like Hakrin's is. She's got heals, um, heals revive, and then stun on the trait. So really useful for uh, like faction challenges. I'm sure she has some usefulness in guild versus environment, um, but a pretty solid support unit. Uh, Myla is a freeze hero. I don't think we need to talk about her. She's irrelevant basically everywhere. Uh, Galeno is a fantastic PvP hero. Great pick in RTA. He's also pretty good in uh, arena offense and defense. Uh, he has a nice trait that whenever somebody's speed is reduced or increased, uh, he actually jumps in front of them and gets a bonus turn. And then he has an AoE silence, which is really nasty. And on top of that, he has the ability to remove positive effects. So um, he has a lot of places in the meta uh, for PvP. Uh, Noelia? Maybe that's how you say her name? Nolia? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think she's probably viable for Ash Magisteria. She has defense down two on her ultimate. Um, she's able to uh, increase her damage and then heal herself up. Uh, crit damage on her A2 and then defense down her on her uh, S1 as well. So I think she's just maybe viable for Ash Magisteria and maybe the Fire Boss in Guild versus Environment. Hori, I've done a specific guide on Hori. Um, I think he is very underrated. He, I believe, is a pretty nice counter pick to heroes like Ralph. Um, he's viable in Rift of Chaos uh, Fire Boss. He does this uh, bonus attack based on uh, 
based on heroes that have the lowest health. If they were the target, he'll do this bonus attack with this Serpent Thrust, which ignores certain things. Um, and then if he kills somebody, he also uh, does that as well. So he's mainly just a PvP hero, but also viable in Rift of Chaos uh, Fireboss. Uh, Timmons, I've seen some pretty cool teams with Timmons uh, in Ash Magisteria where he launches bonus attacks with ultimate abilities um, if your team attacked a boss or an elite hero, which uh, are usually categorized as elite heroes, the minions within dungeons. So he's really, really cool there. Um, decent uh, hero in guild versus environment as well, I believe, uh, in a stun set. So he's also probably viable in uh, Void Tower Hard in that capacity as well. Uh, Bocce. I also made a guide on Bocce as well. He is just top tier in PvP. He is the answer to a lot of these pesky, light, dark, tank comps, overpowered uh, heroes. He, he's amazing. He does this ignore 100% of uh, an enemy's defense. His multiplier says it's 80% damage, but because he's ignoring 100% defense, this just hits so much harder than you would ever imagine. Um fantastic hero in pvp i use him in guild versus environment as well um, just because he does really nice damage there and he's also viable in rift of chaos fire boss rosalind you know i made a specific video on her as well her damage output on rift of chaos fire boss is really really good um, i'm excited to use her in guild versus environment as well against that fire boss uh, so I think she's used in those two areas. You know, she does bonus attacks uh, based on her rage. Uh, she can gain rage if the uh, enemy has less than uh, 70 or 50% health, depending on her ascension. Um, so a great single target uh, water hero for PvE content. <laughs> Jonathan, top tier epic for PvP, PvE everywhere. Dungeons, Void Tower hard, PvP guild versus environment amazing hero i've talked about him all the time i'm sure you guys know what he does grants big shields attack down defense down on his ultimate and then unhealable on his basic so fantastic hero helmar bleed hero useless daphne um <laughs> Uh, I think she could be viable in Ash Magisteria. I haven't taken the time to do that, though. I think there's much better heroes out there. Uh, the only thing I can say is if you're free to play and she's the only water hero that you have, maybe you can make her work in Ash Magisteria, but I don't see her used anywhere else. Nathalia, top tier hero in Dungeon Clearing, Void Tower Hard. I still use her to this day. Um, fantastic hero, one of the OGs positive effects uh, allow her to attack multiple heroes because uh, all of her abilities are single target but her trait allows you to have them act as aoe abilities without them actually being quote unquote aoe abilities so that kind of gets around specific mechanics it works in her favor um, she also has the ability to give herself attack up and immune if she has a positive effect on her so she, like, plays into her own trait. Fantastic hero. Top-tier epic uh, in the game still to this day. Um, yeah, time to move on. Lordric. This guy actually, I think, is a pretty nice pick um, in PvP game modes. He counterattacks anytime he takes a control effect. So if he's, you know, being stunned or frozen or anything like that, taunted, he'll counterattack with his ultimate ability, which scales off of his max health. So pretty cool hero. Um, I would say he's he's probably only viable in uh, in PvP. But anyway, guys, that is it. All epics reviewed, uh, where they're useful, where I've used them, uh, where other people have said that they're useful uh i hope you enjoyed the video and i will catch you on the next one see ya